Over 85% of Americans consume coffee on a daily basis. This is the most widely consumed psychoactive substance in the world, and it has plenty of downsides. So in this video, I'm going to show you a molecular cousin of caffeine that has all of the benefits and very little, if any, of the downsides. Stick around to the end. You may just never use caffeine again, and you won't miss it. Here's why. But once you actually consume the caffeine, whether it's in the form of coffee, an energy drink, tea, yerba mate, whatever it is, it breaks down into three metabolites, theobromine, theophylline, and the subject of today's video, which is called paraxanthine. Paraxanthine is about 80% of the metabolites of caffeine, and paraxanthine naturally occurs in certain plants like coffee beans, tea leaves, grapefruit, and cacao. But what makes it so special is that it's responsible for almost all of the feel-good effects and beneficial effects of caffeine without the side effects. It has a very large therapeutic window. It's hard to overdo paraxanthine, unlike caffeine. Out of all three metabolites and caffeine itself, pure paraxanthine is also the safest. From all the research I read, the lowest therapeutic dose seems to be about 50 milligrams, but the ideal dose ranges between 100 and 300 milligrams. Since paraxanthine is so closely related to caffeine, it shares many of the same mechanisms, although it seems to have a stronger effect on dopamine, resulting in greater motivation and ambition and drive effects as compared to caffeine. I will now put up a comparison table on the screen to show how paraxanthine and caffeine compare. The use cases are very similar to caffeine, but some of its properties are unique, so it actually has more versatility. Unlike caffeine, paraxanthine users do not develop dependency or tolerance. It is non-habituating, meaning that if I take 200 milligrams each day on the sixth or seventh day, I'm not going to necessarily experience withdrawal symptoms if I stop. Genetic differences make a big difference for caffeine metabolism, but not necessarily for paraxanthine. Slow metabolizers of caffeine can take a small dose early in the morning and it can still disrupt their sleep several half-lives of the drug later. Paraxanthine alone, however, is much more consistent and theoretically has a shorter half-life than caffeine. Paraxanthine, from my own experience and from what I've read, doesn't have any GI upset, it won't make you run to the bathroom, and it won't cause nausea or any form of digestive discomfort. And caffeine is also a diuretic, meaning that it causes you to excrete water more often and therefore become dehydrated. That's why you'll see some coffee companies these days fortifying their products with minerals and electrolytes to help keep the balance right. Paraxanthine doesn't have this issue. At the end of the half-life, you also do not experience the same crash as you do when caffeine wears off. It's a slow and steady come down, as I'll describe in my personal experience with it since I've used it for a while now. But one of the first things I noticed is that paraxanthine does not have the same jitters or nervous feelings or cold, clammy sweats or any of the other prominent side effects of caffeine that we take for granted. I will just summarize the benefits of paraxanthine here because it's a novel molecule patented by one company and only used in four products right now. I imagine there will be an avalanche of paraxanthine research in 2023 and going forward. So for that reason, since videos are harder to update, I will have all of the research, the links to the studies, and everything for your perusal in the article accompanying this video. Link to this in the description below as well. The main benefits won't be all that surprising. Things like improved attention, improved memory, faster reaction time, 
motivation, drive, and ambition increases, athletic performance, alertness and wakefulness, and even some fat burning thermogenesis. If you're finding this useful so far, go ahead and just lightly tap that like button. Hopefully when the word gets out, paraxanthine research will skyrocket and the prices will start to come down a bit for us consumers. Now I'll share my personal experience after using paraxanthine for about a week straight. First of all, as I mentioned, there are only four products on the market that contain paraxanthine. There's no individual powders or capsules. It's all within blends and stacks made by companies. So since the raw powder wasn't available, I chose the next best thing. And that was a company I found called Update or as they list on their site, drinkupdate.com. So this is the box I received. They have a handful of different flavors. This one is berry. This one is mandarin. So unfortunately, none of these drinks are just pure paraxanthine, but I like this one because they have the cleanest formula. They use the highest quality nootropic ingredients and even down to the sweeteners and additives. They used allulose, which is a really high quality sweetener as compared to some of the other ones using artificial sweeteners and junk like that. So clearly this company cares about quality ingredients, which bodes well for the paraxanthine blend. It does contain about 300 milligrams of paraxanthine. And as a low to moderate caffeine user in my daily cup of coffee, I didn't know how that would bode for me. So I started slow with half of a can and took inventory after about 20 minutes. And sure enough, I already felt it. And compared to caffeine, it feels a lot smoother, a lot cleaner. It's difficult to compare directly because this is not pure paraxanthine, but this formula really did feel like the benefits and the good parts of caffeine that I look forward to. It almost felt like that elusive caffeine sweet spot that we all chase after one cup, sometimes two, and then we tend to quickly overshoot and do too much. I was able to finish an entire can and to my surprise, I felt great. Very clear headed, According to my wearables and my continuous heart rate variability monitor, my heart rate didn't elevate as much as it does on caffeine. It seems that my biomarkers stayed relatively stable, which is also what the research showed so far. I also felt generally less sympathetic activation. So often with stimulants of any kind, you feel that certain edginess, the stress of the central nervous system activation and much less so on paraxanthine. I was quite worried because this does contain a nootropic ingredient called L-tyrosine and specifically the activated version of it called N-acetyl-L-tyrosine, NALT for short. And usually I get a splitting headache from that and I feel very robotic. But for some reason in this formula, I did not feel that at all. I just felt good and it seemed to last much longer than I expected. Theoretically, the half-life is much shorter than caffeine, but seven hours later, I tried to take a nap and quickly gave up on that. Absolutely no way. And even about nine hours later, I was still going strong. According to the update team, they spent about two years and many iterations going through and meticulously refining their formula to get the perfect product using peer reviewed, peer researched nootropic ingredients. It certainly works and it's nice just being able to toss one of these in my bag or in my car and just have them for whenever caffeine is not available. Because personally, I like this a lot more than coffee, although I'm not really an energy drink person this might be converting me. One of the other things I like to consider with paraxanthine and really any nootropic is what does it combine well with? What ingredients can I stack with paraxanthine to get better effects? And although the update drink already has some nootropics in it, I was curious what else I could add because more is better, right? Or at least it can be better if done appropriately. 
And please note that none of these stacks are scientifically proven. There's just not enough research yet on that. Although paraxanthine itself has been shown to be quite a bit safer than caffeine. Do your own diligence and your own research, but these are some of the things that I've been looking into combining with it. So the very first one I call the Zen Master stack, and it's kind of like the original nootropic of mixing caffeine with theanine. And instead of caffeine, you just substitute paraxanthine. So paraxanthine and theanine. And that's great for just rounding out the alpha brainwave dominant, relaxing idea generation, creative, meditative, introspective state. So if that's your goal, the Zen Master stack is one to look into. Next is what I call the flow state stack. And that is paraxanthine with a high quality kava product, kava extract, and not kava kava. The two seem to synergize very well and down-regulate the nervous system without sedating. Kava also seems to have some monoamine oxidase inhibition properties, which can boost the effects of stimulants like caffeine or paraxanthine, while also adding some other dimensionality to them. But note that it also makes them feel quite a bit stronger, so tread lightly. I like this stack to naturally enhance EQ for social situations and to quickly build report for something like selling or podcasting or negotiating. Anytime you're interacting with other humans, this is a killer stack. The other two I like, I call this one the super learner and it's paraxanthine with a very small dose of clean nicotine. Nicotine is one of the most overlooked yet powerful nootropics for learning and memory when dosed appropriately, not via smoking, but through a lozenge or a low dose patch or gum. But it's also obviously an addictive chemical. So I would only use this one sparingly. The way I like to do this is to use paraxanthine in the morning and then later in the evening when I need a brief little study session, whether I'm reading or taking a course and just want to really be there present and integrate the material better, I will take a really small dose of nicotine, about one milligram, and it seems to temporarily reactivate the paraxanthine. And it doesn't last all that long, but it makes it a really great session. So. Those are my stacks I've created so far. It's possible and likely that I'll have more out by the time this video is posted. So again, go ahead and check out the link to the written article in the description below. And if you like this kind of thing, I do partner with Update and they've arranged for a 10% discount with the code URBAN10. All this will be in the article as well as any new sources I discover. But if you want to head over there right now and pick it up for yourself, that's one option. And finally, if you want to get the most out of your nootropics, say greater effects or fewer side effects or greater cost effectiveness, there are some things you must know. For that reason, I put together a little mini free nootropics course that can take your nootropic and cognitive enhancement experience to the next level. A link to check it out and to join for free will also be in the description. Well, you made it to the end. Hashtag badass to you. This is just my experience and I'm sure plenty of others in this community have tried paraxanthine and may have different experiences. So if that's you, go ahead and drop a comment below and let us know your experience, your thoughts, or how you go about improving paraxanthine and or caffeine.